can't decide which stand to go to. I could go in the one that I sat in this morning. I know that buck's got a doe pin down in there. But I don't know if that's a deer I would even shoot after watching the video this morning. It looks decent, but it wasn't HLB or the big six. We've got a good win for each, both of these stands, the one that's in deep or this one. I'm just gonna flip a stone or something. Okay, if it lands on the dirty side right here, we'll hunt the deep stand. If it lands on the clean side, or if the clean side's facing up, we'll hunt this stand. So if this side's up, we're hunting the deep stand. If this side's up, we're hunting this stand. the deep stand. I have a hell of a time making choices like this. Think about the positives of each and then the negatives of each and then it's like a big mind game. We're heading in deep.
Scott climbed up into the tree, hung my bow up, and I heard ch -ch 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 right down the path that I walked in. So those two bucks both hit my scent trail from like literally five minutes ago and tracked it all the way to the base of the tree because of that dull and heat urine I put on my boots. And then that little buck just kept circling the tree because he was like, they were tracking what they thought was a doe. They couldn't figure out why it just stopped. That little buck's actually backtracking my track right now. He's going back on it toward, he's gonna go right to the, right to the Honda. <laughs> that was really, really cool though. I mean, that was fast. It came right up my boot track nose to the ground that was a pretty decent little late point that was leading the pack there he came right up here to about 20 yards and then just took the trail into the swamp but that little buck was really bamboozled he was like <laughs> he really wanted to track that doe down It probably even made it better because they probably heard me walking in through that muck. I tried to be really quiet, but you know, that muck was making noise. So they're possibly investigating the sound and then they smelled the dough and eat urine and they're like, holy crap, we gotta go. She's ready, you know. That was about as textbook as it can get right there with dough and heat urine. Now, if only that was HLB that was following me down. That's a heck of a good start, though. That's the third buck I've seen. I've been here for 10 minutes. been in that stand for 15 minutes and seen three different bugs and we're moving to a different stand. I just got a picture of HLB deep in, in a deep part of the swamp and I know what stand he's going to go by to come out this evening. So we got to get there fast. We're going to cut him off on his way back.
as long as it's a true north, I'm good. But if it goes out of the northeast at all, I'm not good. I put a lot of that dough and extra scent on my boots, though, so maybe it could cover it for me. I don't know. I don't know, but he was just right here. I'll show you the picture. in that patch of brush in between that tree stand and the, and the duck blind. Hopefully I can catch him coming back through here at night. It's kind of crazy for leaving that other stand. I'd only been in there for 15 minutes and seen three different bucks. But there's a lot of bucks down here and only two that I'll shoot, so... And this is one of them right up here. Here. Zane's got a video of the recovery, so we'll show you the, the recovery video next. He wanted to get it weighed over here, and it's a really cool looking deer. It's pretty palmated on his beam over here. Actually, that light's almost too bright for this. Can't really see him too good when he's dangling down like that, but yeah, there we go. This other side reminds me of uh, shark teeth. Pretty darn cool. Good kill, Zane. All right, so I know I didn't get any of that on video. There might be a little bit of him running off, but I just shot a nine point that I've been watching. I got him ever since Velvet. Um, he kind of he had a really cool like 90 degree bend in his G3 that he and he broke off, but. I had a lot of action this morning. I saw four different bucks. Had a little seven come through really early. Then I saw down the ridge over that way, there was two little bucks working their way down. I was paying attention to them. And I heard a twig pop behind me. And I looked and <laughs> that nine was at 20 yards behind me. He came walking up through right here and was smelling where I had brushed up against these briars and I was right there I mean he was at five yards he ran out around all this to right here he was standing right here when I shot him oh, there's my arrow vein popped off but he was right there and he ran off over there I lost track of him so I'm gonna follow this up a little bit see what it looks like I'm pretty sure I watched him go down but I'm just gonna kind of take my time and see what happens 
it's been a while since I've shot a buck with my bow. Actually, it's been eight years, I think. So, it's pretty exciting. All right, I found him, finally. Took a little while to... I kind of overstuck, stepped his tracks when he came up through, but... Came in, went in perfect, right there. Came out, center of the shoulder on the other side. Whew. Yeah. I'm happy with that. It's been some time coming for me to finally, uh, <laughs> finally put something together on a buck that I had pictures of and kind of made the plan to try and kill this kill in the year so yeah so I got one other buck with uh, my eye on so maybe try and get that done in rifle season but I'm happy 2022 archery buck um, like I said in the beginning there uh, I kind of hate I didn't get it on video because I do have a lot of history of this deer um, from last year and this year but it just it happened so quick there's I couldn't it was all I could do to even grab my bow um, I had two small bucks coming down this ridge behind me towards my stand where I got a mock scrape and uh, I put out a, uh, some scent wicks of white lightning on it this morning <clears throat> and I was watching them because I could see the first one and I could hear another one with them and I at the time I didn't really realize it was just another smaller buck I thought maybe it was following a doe or something but I was paying attention to them and then I heard a twig pop behind me and I looked behind me and he was already at 20 yards behind me um, he walked right to the base of my tree and was smelling the little briars this whole bottom is just a bunch of green briar and he could smell where I had bumped into it. And he was at probably five steps. But I had to wait forever for him to take a step underneath me. And when he did, I started to draw as slow as I could. Uh, but he caught me and he jumped out to about 15 yards and stopped. And I let him have it. Uh, one end perfect behind the shoulder came out center of his opposite shoulder um, double long might have clipped the heart also and he only went I mean I'm probably only 60 yards from my stand right now but he did a little bit of a hook um, yeah, I'm happy I kind of like the whole it's all oh, it needs your own thing but when you can kind of pick a buck out and target that buck that's that's what's fun to me um, just trying to figure out one single deer but I do have another buck in here that I've been kind of chasing around a little bit also so unless my dad can get a shot at him in archery season I'll be looking to looking to get him in rifle so but I get him taken care of it is it's a ways out of here but yeah I'm happy with him. He's not the biggest thing in the world, horn-wise, but he's an older deer, and uh, I'm happy with it. As you can see, we're back at the house, and my game plan for the night didn't end up working out. Uh, HLB did not come back down the gator path like he has in the past when I've caught him on that higher camera there, and. Uh, I ended up just seeing some does that went out into the field across the creek from me. And uh, somebody that was hunting on the neighbors actually shot at HLB tonight and missed him. So after I moved and got into where I was, he must have either winded me or just cruised across the road or something. Either he went down on the other side of the creek and then crossed the road or he... Uh, went down the main ridge and crossed the road. Anyways, he left Cherry Ridge that night and ended up over on the neighbors. The neighbor actually missed him 
and uh, HLB lives to see another day. So it's unfortunate for the neighbor that missed him, but he was certainly excited to get a shot opportunity at him and see him. Uh, so we'll be back after him in the morning. It seems like with this deer, every time I zig, he zags. It's really been frustrating to hunt, especially with these cell cams, you know. I was set up in the first spot tonight and it was absolutely awesome. I mean, I had literally three bucks on me within minutes of me getting in that stand. And then I got the cell picture of HLB over in the creek bottom and it's like, well, you know, quite frankly, it doesn't matter if I see 15 bucks in the stand I'm at, there's only one deer I'm probably going to shoot and it's going to be HLB. So I might as well go hunt the one deer down there rather than sit here and watch a buck parade go by of deer that I'm not going to shoot. So that was kind of my intentions or thoughts and the, and where I was at, I was not going to see HLB. It was a long ways away from where he was on the creek bottom. Uh, but it is what it is. It was still an exciting, an exciting evening. I was on literally on pins and needles the entire evening I was sitting there thinking that you know, the next leaf that cracks is going to be him coming down the trail. Uh, just didn't end up being that way. Uh, we'll be back after him in the morning. We'll see you then.